Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today we're gonna to be painting gingerbread jingle bells, <laughs> and I'm gonna be sipping on a little Pinot Grigio. And if you enjoy this video, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel, and that you also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for the materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I will be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, deep yellow, green oxide, fire red, Mars black, and burnt sienna, which I'll call rust. Of course, you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, I have a number nine round brush and I have a number two round brush and I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. Of course, you can switch those up too if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I have a couple of additional resources for you that can help you through your painting process. One of the resources is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the paint and the brushes and all that good stuff. And then there's a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for this step is we're gonna be doing an outline for our bells and our gingerbread man. I'm gonna be using my pencil, and how I'm gonna guide you through this is I'm gonna guide you through a couple of markers, we'll make some markers, we'll connect them with a designated shape, and then by the time we're done, we should have a, a, enough shapes that will give us um, sections that we can paint our base coats onto. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my bells on. So I'm gonna have two bells, I'm gonna have one really big one here, and then I'll have a partial one over here. So I'm gonna do my bigger one first, and then we'll put the smaller one, or the one that's on the, at a little bit of an angle and the partial one over here in a minute. So I'm gonna go about halfway into my canvas up at the top and then I'm gonna come down, I would say about a quarter of the way down my canvas and make myself a little bit of a, of a diagonal type mark. That's gonna be the top of this oval. Then I'm gonna come down directly below that almost to the center height, maybe a little bit higher than the center and make myself another kind of little diagonal. I'm going to come over to the right about, I would say, almost halfway between here and the edge of my canvas and come up a little bit. This is going to be the edge of my oval. And then if I come over to the left and about, I would say, a quarter of the way down my canvas, that'll be the, the other corner to my oval. So I'm going to connect these four markers into an oval shape. So something like this, and it doesn't have to be perfect. You're gonna see, I'm gonna kind of sketch it. I'm not gonna just go full on and try and do it in one shot because I know that when I make these kind of markers, my head tends to kind of make pointy corners to these things. So I definitely am just gonna kind of sketch this until it looks like it's a nice oval forming. And that's pretty good. And you can kind of keep Keep manipulating it until you feel like it's a nice oval. You just don't want to have pointy corners to it, so just kind of keep manipulating it until it feels like a nice oval for you. And then once you have that on there, you're gonna go all the way up to the top of your canvas, just about in the center. Make yourself a little bit of a marker. I've got a diagonal marker coming to the left. 
Then I'm going to come over to the right hand side. This is going to be maybe about two to three inches or maybe about a fifth of the way over to your the side of your canvas. I'm going to make myself another marker. These are going to be the top portion of my bell. I'm going to have these come out like this and meet these edges in through here. So here I go. I'm going to start over on the edge. I'm going to bring this in a little bit in through here. And then I'm going to kind of bump it out just a little bit, something like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here, but I want it to look like it belongs together. So I'm going to just kind of start this one down in through here and then maybe bring this up in through here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We're looking at these bells from an angle. So if yours doesn't end up perfect, don't worry about it. We can certainly kind of manipulate it as, as the process goes. We're going to have a big ribbon and some pine needles and stuff up at the top anyway, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Now I'm going to go over to the right hand side. I want to make a sideways one on um, kind of behind this one. So from here, I'm going to go over to the right hand side. Just the top of that oval will come over to the right hand side and go up just a little bit. Make myself a mark. Then I'm going to come down maybe about an inch, inch and a half from that. Make myself a mark. So I have two markers on this left hand side. Then I'm going to creep up this little edge here, maybe about an inch and a half to two inches. Make myself a marker. And then I'm going to come down this edge in through here, make myself a marker, maybe about an inch in through there. I want to, sorry, I want to make another marker over here. So I have one, two, and then I'm going to come down maybe about, I don't know, at a little bit more of a distance than that. Come down here. So right now I have five markers. I'm going to connect these bottom two with an, the bottom part of my oval. So one, two, three, four. This is in essence the bottom oval of here. So I'm going to go ahead and connect these two with the bottom part of my bell, something like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and connect the top two. So it should resemble a similar size to that, but only a portion of it. And then this marker right here is going to be the side and it's going to end up up here. So I'm going to make a similar kind of curve to this bell here, something like that and just kind of get it to disappear up into this corner. Now I've got to do the two little dangling um, swinging balls. So I want this to kind of look like it's almost coming directly from the top. So I'm going to come somewhere in through here, make myself kind of a circle like that. And then I'm just going to go ahead and make one in this vicinity about the same size. And again, they don't have to be perfect. We're going to be doing a lot of painting that's going to um, allow a time for adjusting on these. Now I want to go ahead and make my gingerbread man. So my gingerbread man is going to be hanging on to this ball right in through here. So I'm actually going to start there. I'm going to put myself a little bit of a, I'm going to call it a gingerbread man hand <laughs> right in through here. It's just going to be kind of like a little bit of an oval just so I know that that's going to be like the size of the, the hand coming down. And then I'm just going to kind of bring this around this oval, something like this, and bring it just past the, the bell like this. This one right here, we're going to connect that to a leg in a minute. So I'm just going to bring it right down like that just to start the party here. I'm going to put a head on. So my head, I'm going to have just um, the height of it is going to be just a little bit below here. So somewhere around there and the width of it is going to come maybe just about an inch or so into my um, from the left of my canvas. I'm going to have a circle somewhere in through here. It could be a circle, could be kind of like an ovally type shape. You can certainly determine the exact shape of your head. And again, I'm just going to kind of do sketch it a little bit. If you have a little sliver in through here that's showing the background, that's okay. So something like that is going to be my little gingerbread man head. And then I've got one arm that's about this long from here to here. So that's about as long as I want the other one to go. So I need a little, net, a little area where it's going to come out in through here. This is going to come 
down in through here. I'm curving it a little bit. This is going to be the arm. I'm going to go right about to here, which is maybe about almost a quarter of the way up my canvas. And then I'm going to bring it in something like this. So I don't want to bring it in too, too far, maybe diagonally almost where my, my head is somewhere in there. I'm going to have a big leg coming down in through here. I want it really close to the bottom of my canvas and it's going to be, you know, kind of directly underneath that arm. So if this is, I'm going to make this my little arm, my gingerbread armpit. <laughs> I'm going to curve this like this, bring this down in through here, something like that. And I'm going to have his leg coming somewhere in through here. And of course you can certainly modify your gingerbread shape as much as you want. I want his a leg to be kind of straight out like this, almost like he's either falling or dancing while he's hanging on to this ball. So I'm going to have this leg kind of coming in an upward type fashion, maybe something like this, and then curving up like this. And I want it, you know, similar size to this other leg. And then I've got to meet this waist or this midsection area somewhere in through here. And that is all I'm going to be doing for my gingerbread band. Maybe thicken this arm up a little bit so it's like this arm. We are going to be using our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this all nice and outlined, if you wanted, you could certainly erase this little line in through here that will make your your painting experience a little bit easier but once you've got your outline on here tweak it all you want and then we're going to be switching brushes to our large brush for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we are painting our background so i am going to be using as i'm wiping away all my eraser crumbs <laughs> i'm going to be using my large brush i'm going to be using white and brown and I'm going to just be making, pre-mixing myself like a creamy tan color. You could certainly do any color background that you would like. I just want my nice and neutral and something that's not going to take away from, from the focal point. So I'm just going to take some of my white and just add a little bit of brown to it. And you just want to make sure that you mix enough that you will have plenty to do your background. I'm going to say, make sure I save some of my, my, regular white for later because I know that I'm going to need some white for other stuff. So once I've got the color that I want, I'm just going for a light tan kind of color. I'm going to paint in my entire exterior. I'm going to go right up to my pencil marks. And if you do run into your pencil mark, it's okay. Just let it blend into your paint. Um, you could use a different type of pencil that doesn't kind of um, bleed into the paint, but I, I'm just using a regular standard pencil, so you run the risk of doing that, but it's all right. I just let it, let it work its way into my painting and let happen whatever is gonna happen. And I make sure that I, I'm gonna have a nice full coat of this paint in the background. I, I know that with light colors, they are pretty easy to get a nice coat with them because there's a lot of white, which makes them not very see-through. So you usually can get a nice coat on that first go around, but if you find that as it's drying, you want to put a second coat on it, just so you have a really nice and uniform layer to it, feel free to do so. I think I'm gonna be able to get away with one coat, but again, if you feel as as it's drying that you're you're starting to see different color variations and if you want to have that nice uniform look to that background um, layer you could certainly do a second coat i do see i have a little sliver in through here that, <laughs> that is open so i'm just making sure that i get that little area and i'm not doing any fancy paint stroke i'm just making sure that i get all the paint on there um, again with the the light color you'll get a pretty good coat and you if you are making your brush strokes pretty uniform with the quantity of paint you may not be able to detect the paint stroke later so it doesn't really matter what direction 
your your painting in but if you find that you can see your paint strokes and you're not digging them and they're going in all different kinds of directions then again a second coat would definitely help to alleviate that kind of look if it's not desirable desirable to you and then i have this little section then i have that tiny sliver up in the top right hand section you can see i'm going right up to my pencil marks even if you bump into them a little bit don't worry because you'll probably see see them anyways through the paint and then once i've got this step all nice and done i am going to be using this same brush for the next step so you can just wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we are painting the first layer on our bells we're going to be using our large brush and we're going to be using brown yellow and white and what we're going to do is we're going to mix two shades of my version of gold <laughs> um, so when i do this we're going to be painting these top two sections in a lighter shade along with the actual bell ball here and then the inside will be a darker shade so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take some of my brown i will add some yellow to it and i'm going to mix it together just the brown and the yellow to start and this is going to get me a really dark type of gold color a really deep dark golden color almost on the greener side will give you that under um, tone of the gold and then I'm going to add a tiny bit of white to it that's going to get me my darker version to get the lighter version what I'll do is I will take some of that add more yellow and white to it so I'm going to get two shades one is going to be on the lighter side and one is on the darker side so once I've got the two shades that I want what I'm going to do is I'm going to take I didn't wash my brush because the last color I did was the light one. I'll just take the lighter of the two and I'm going to paint the large sections or the outside sections with the lighter shade. And then I'm gonna paint the inside section with the darker shade. So you may find that you want to leave a little space between these two bells because they're gonna be the same color but if you can see through the paint and see your pencil mark i'll show you you'll be able to see mine then you can just paint right over that section so if you can see through the paint just paint right over that section and utilize the pencil underneath to give you the visual as to where those two bells are separate set separated so I'm not doing a really thick coat. I'm just kind of getting a nice even coat on here. I'm gonna do both, both of my bells with a lighter shade for here. And I'll also do it for the, um, the little bell hanging down. So I'm gonna bring this just along the edges here. I'm bringing it right to my pencil mark. You can even paint over that pencil a little bit. We are going to be adding all kinds of details onto this later. So this brush stroke doesn't have to be perfect. You just wanna have a nice even coat along, those, along both of those bells. I'm gonna do my circle in through here. Again, my edges don't have to be perfect. I have my little circle in through here that I'm going to do. And now you could wash your brush, but I'm probably just going to wipe it on my paper towel <laughs> in order to get to the darker version. So I'm just going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm going to pick up some of my darker version. And now I'm going to paint the opposing section. So if you come to do this and you say, oh my gosh, they're not different enough. I can't really see the difference. You can always add more brown to that darker shade and until you can visibly see the difference. So you do want to be able to see the difference, even if it's not a terribly drastic amount, as long as you can visually see the difference, that's gonna help you to build these dimensional layers on this bell. And I'm bringing this all the way to the edge. Again, I'm not using really heavy paint at this point. I just am looking for this to be what I refer to as my primer coat for the, the particular section. And because I am using 
a little bit darker of a shade in this area, it will start that building process of it being in, in, a, in a dimensional um, way. It's going to be darker on the inside of the, of the bells. And then I'm just going to go ahead and do this other section with my darker version of gold. And I'm going to bring it right up to my little gingerbread man. And again, the paint stroke isn't the, the direction of it isn't terribly important at this point, but if you can try and get it on the smoother side, that will that will help your painting process as we go through each step. Um, but again, we'll be we're going to be building many layers onto this. So if it's again not perfect at this point, it's all right. It will be pretty darn streaky at this point, especially if you're using a similar brush that I am and similar paint to what I'm using. And then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this first layer on here, you can wash and dry this big brush, get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer to our gingerbread man. So I'm gonna be using my large brush. The colors I'm using are brown, rust, yellow, and a little bit of white. So again, I'm gonna kind of pre-mix myself a color. I need it to be much different than my bells so it so the color palette isn't too similar between the two of them. I want you to be able to tell the difference. So that's why I'm gonna be utilizing that a lot of that rust. And I don't want it light right now. I want it really, really dark as an undertone. So I'm going to be using my rust. I'm gonna add some brown to it. And I'm gonna add some yellow to it. And I'm gonna mix it up. So I'm going for almost like a dark, maybe milk chocolate, maybe a little bit on the, on the redder side. Um, or on the more rusty side than milk chocolate, but something along that line. So when you're using the burnt sienna, it can tend to go pink on you, which is why I'm utilizing some yellow in my mixture as well. And I'm gonna use just a teeny tiny touch of white as well, so it's not super see-through on me. So once I've got my mixture that I want, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply it onto my onto my um, gingerbread man with dots. Cause I want this to look pretty darn textured. So as I'm doing this, the, the texture of my, of my bristles is gonna add this really natural kind of effect to it. You might have a little difficulty up in this small area, but I'll use the corner of my brush and I'll give you a little bit of a, of a trick on how to get that paint on the, just the corner of your brush. But I'm gonna bring these little dots all the way to the edge, make sure that I'm hiding my pencil marks. You might still be able to see through the paint a little bit, especially um, where that neck is if you have a big pencil line on that neck. But again, don't worry about it because we have many more layers and many more things that we're gonna be putting on top of our gingerbread man. So you can have thick paint or thin paint, whatever um, is your comfort zone is totally fine. As I, I'm gonna go up and do that little area in a second and you can, I'll show you how I'm gonna control my brush. What I'm gonna do with my brush is I'm actually going to squish it on the side of my palette and what will happen is my bristles will get in control for me. They kind of go all the way tight together and I can take it and I can just kind of dot right next to my ball. And even if you bump into that golden ball area, don't worry about it because we're get, we've got other layers to go on there too. I'll let you know when you gotta be nice and clean. <laughs> but right now we don't have to be nice and clean. We're just gonna kind of get this, this textural layer uh, onto our gingerbread man, which is gonna make it look all nice and thick and like it's delicious and he's gonna be having so much fun hanging from his, his holiday bells here. And I'm just gonna kinda keep going until I have the entire gingerbread man covered here. I am utilizing more of the tip 
of my brush as opposed to the side of my brush. So that will give me more of that speckly look as opposed to um, almost like a brush stroke kind of look. So if you find yours has lots of um, directional streaks in it, then try to focus more on using the tip of the brush for these um, like stippling dots as opposed to a brush stroke. This will help for the future layers too. So you have a great um, textural base to it that is very easy to build highlights and shadows onto it without ha having much effort at all. And then let's see, what are we gonna do for the next step? We are going to be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this beautiful layer onto your cute little gingerbread man. And of course you can shape this whatever way you want too. Maybe your gingerbread man is, you know, shaped like your favorite one that you made as a kid. You can totally do this whatever way you want, but I'm just having fun and making it into kind of a general shape here. Um, but I'm going to be using my medium brush for the next step and I feel like I'm, I'm ready now. So I'm going to put my large brush away, take out my medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing bell shadows. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using black, brown, and my two shades of gold. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to assume in my head that I, my light source is over on the left-hand side, left and up kind of. So I'm gonna put my shadows on the right side of my bells, and I'm also putting them underneath inside my bells and the right bottom side of the bell balls. <laughs> I don't know what else to call them. Chimes, the chimes, I don't know. Um, so how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna always use very little bit of paint. I'm gonna start with it really dark on the edge and then I'm gonna build it to um, the, the regular color. I'm gonna have like a little dip in part where the bell kind of dips in so the shadow will carry a little bit into the bell there. So I'm gonna start over here on the right hand side. I'm gonna put a little bit of black and brown on my brush to start. And I'm gonna just kind of go along this right hand edge over in through here. And while the paint is still kind of wet, I'm gonna start just kind of rubbing it into the main area. And when I feel like I've rubbed it far enough, what I can do is pick up that original gold color and just get it to blend in a little bit. And you can have your shadowy areas as dramatic as you want or as subtle as you want. We are going to be doing highlights in a little while, which will enhance this, it'll make it pop out even more. Um, but this just kind of gets it started. So I'm doing the shadow and then I'm getting it to blend into that main color area. Even if your main color area is currently a little bit streaky, you could certainly do a full second coat on it or just wait till when we do the highlight part and then you'll in essence kind of merge those two sections together. So again, I'm gonna start with some black and some brown. I'm gonna do the same, the same exercise on this one here where I'm kind of outlining that exterior edge, something like this. I need a little bit more paint on my brush. I feel I went a longer distance than I did on that one. I'm gonna put a little bit more in this section where I feel like it would dip in because of the, the, the form or the shape of the object. And then once I've got it, what I feel to be blended pretty well, I'm gonna pick up some of that original gold without washing my brush and just get it to blend in even more. And again, I'm not really terribly concerned about the entire bell right now. I'm just looking to add those shadowy areas. And again, you don't need a whole lot of paint on your brush to get it to, to be able to manipulate um, this kind of gradient that you've got going on. So now that I've got those top two areas, 
I'm gonna head into these little balls because it's the same light one, light gold. So again, tiny bit of black and brown because it's a really small area and I think I'm gonna hit them back to back instead of going all one and then the other. So I've got black and brown on my brush. I'm gonna just kind of outline that right hand side and bot like right bottom. Now without washing my brush, I'm picking up some of that original gold, the lighter of the two, and getting it to blend in. Same thing over here. This one's gonna be under his little gingerbread paw, something like that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do these two areas. So these I'm gonna go all black. That's gonna be my shadow color, and then I'm gonna so I'll do black to start, and then I'll pull the dark gold. So I'm gonna start with just black. I'm gonna underline this area in through here. Then I'm gonna pick up my dark gold and get it to blend in. So you can pull this a little bit under if you want. Maybe yours comes a little bit from the side. If you feel like you have too much black on your brush, just wipe it off on your paper towel. And then I'm gonna get it to blend in with that neighboring gold, the dark gold area. And again, if it's not a perfect blend over here yet, don't worry about it, because we will hit that when we do the highlight area. Oops, I just ran into my little center area. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing over here. So again, I'm gonna start with just black. I want Oops, I just stuck my hand into the gingerbread body and got gingerbread color all over my hand. <laughs> That's the story of my life. I have paint everywhere. Wet paint, it just creeps into every, every place of my life. So I'm gonna just put some black paint up and through here while it's still wet. And I know my light source is over here, so it would make sense if this is dark, nice and dark up and through here. I'm picking up my dark gold color while my brush is still has some of that black on it and just getting them to blend in a little bit. You can bring this down in through this area a little bit if you want to. Wherever you feel that that shadow would definitely work out, then that would be great. And again, I'm just getting that darker area to blend in with the with the regular um, section or the main area of that section. And then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your shadows on your bells, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're putting our highlights on our bells. So I'm using my medium brush and I am using white and my two gold colors. And if I feel I, I need additional blend into the darker areas, I can certainly go into the black or the, br or the brown as well. So again, my light source is up here on the top left area. So I have really bright highlights going to happen. This is a round object. So I do not need my highlight over on the far left, but I want it a little bit in um, through, not at the edge, but maybe a little bit into it. So if I put it here and kind of get the lightest area here and here and fade it out, that's gonna make it look more round. I still want this kind of crease or this dip to be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna concentrate my brightest bright in through here and up in through here. I'll have a really bright bright here and then maybe a little bit on these balls as well. So we're in essence finishing our bells with highlights and maybe blending into the to the regular color as well. So I am going to start, where am I going to start? I think I'm going to start with this one in through here. I'm going to put yellow and white on my brush. And again, the trick here is you don't need a ton of paint. You just need a, you need a plan is really what you need. So I know that I want some real bright paint in through here. This is going to be kind of the, the edge of my, of my bell. And it can kind of fade 
into the darkness over here but I still want an edge to my bell over here too so I can pull a little bit of that lighter color in through there because it might get hit by the light coming over in this direction. I want my a real bright highlight up and through here so I'm going to use yellow and white as my brightest of my bright color. So once I've determined where that brightest of the bright goes, and you can see I'm kind of fading it out or rubbing it out into the main section. Once I've determined where that's gonna go, now I just need to blend it with the rest. I do want this to be a little bit darker, so I think I'm gonna pick up some of my darker gold and maybe get that a little bit darker, something like that. And now I'm gonna pick up my lighter gold and finish it off. So I can take that lighter gold and just finish off my edges, make sure everything blends well together, make sure I have a nice second coat and I don't, if I didn't want streaking with my brush strokes, I'm eliminating that right now. And you just kind of keep tweaking that particular section until you feel that you have the desired dimension to it. So again, if you want it to be brighter or darker, now's the time to tweak it. I might want this a little bit, this little shadowy area, a little bit darker in through here. But my main objective right now is to get those highlights on there and to get it to blend in with the rest of the actual bell. So. Just checking out my work here from a distance. Sometimes it's hard when I'm painting at an angle. I almost can't really see it. I'm kind of flying in the dark or blindly sometimes. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the top of this one, starting with yellow and white to get myself a nice bright edge on the bell in through here. So something like this. And then once I've got that, that brightness, maybe I pull a little bit down in through here because again, the light might catch this little area in through there. Now it's all about fi finishing the blend here. And it might be shadowed a little bit by this bell, so it doesn't have to be as bright as that one. So I'm gonna actually just pick up my original gold color, the lighter gold color, get a nice thin layer on here see how it's working with the blend and then maybe just adjust it a little bit if I want to, but it's looking pretty good to me. I think I just want a little bit darker in through there. So I'm gonna pick up some of my darker sh uh, shades, maybe a little bit of that brown and black and just get this to give it a little bit more form by just bringing this darkness in through this um, area in through here. And again, this is something that you can totally continue to tweak and get that shape of the bell all you want. And then I've got these two little guys to contend with. So again, yellow and white is gonna be my highlight over on this left hand side, the left top. So yellow and white gets me my highlight. And then I'm gonna go into you know yellow and or the original lighter gold color to get that to, to really pop out. And if you want it even brighter, you can certainly just take a touch of that white and give it almost like a little bit of a sparkle, a sparkle spot. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that three times fast. Sparkle spot, sparkle spot. I told you I can't. <laughs> sparkle spot. Sparkle spot, sparkle spot, sparkle. <laughs> sparkle spot, sparkle spot. I cannot do it. Sparkle spot, sparkle, nope, it's not gonna happen. And then we're going to, and then I can just kind of almost gently blend it into the surrounding area and that really gives you a extra bright little highlight. And of course you can do the same thing with the white up here on this edge here. You could always just kind of give yourself that extra additional little pop of brightness if you don't feel like it's standing out enough that white just a little streak here and there goes a long way and then i definitely need to finish um, the inside of this bell so i can bring a little bit of a highlight around those edges just a little lighter tone and then i definitely need to make sure that i have a good finished layer underneath here so i'm just going for my 
original um, dark gold, but you could certainly, if you want there to be a little bit more of um, a highlight or dimension, you can certainly work in any of the brown or the black or you know anything that you need to make sure that you've got a, a nice finished coat on that interior um, section. And then we are going to be switching to our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your bells all nice and complete with their highlights and their shadows, you can put this medium brush away in your water cup. You can take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the second layer on our gingerbread man. I'm gonna be using my large brush and I'm gonna be using my gingerbread man color that I made earlier, plus white, yellow, maybe brown, but maybe just yellow and white. So what I'm gonna do is I want a lighter shade of this. So I'm gonna take some of that gingerbread color that I made and I'm gonna add some yellow and white to it. So I'm not gonna use all of it, I'm just gonna add some yellow, oh, I got some yellow over here, some yellow and white to make a lighter shade. And I don't want it too pink because to me gingerbread cookies are not pink. So I wanna make sure that I keep it on the more creamy kind of side, so or tan kind of side. So once I've got my desired color, just kind of tweaking it just a little bit more here. I don't want it too, too light. I'm gonna show you what I'm getting here, something in this vicinity, making, adding a little bit more yellow here. And then once I've got the color that I want, what I'm gonna do with it is I'm going to do another layer on top of this, but I don't wanna cover it 100%. So I'm not gonna sit here and glob on another layer. I'm going to take my brush, I'm dabbing it onto my paper towel, and now I'm gonna do this faint layer on here. So you're still gonna see some of the speckles of the underneath color, which is gonna give it dimension, and I'm gonna leave a little bit around the edge of that darker color. So you don't have to bring this color all the way to the edge. You can go close, but leave a little bit along the side. I'm not using much paint at all, so it's allowing it to be a little bit translucent, which is giving it that textural kind of effect. And you can see some of those colors underneath it. So I'm gonna go ahead and reload my brush again. I've got more, um, think of this, I, I'm just putting it up to my skin. It's actually almost like my skin color. So that's kind of the color that, um, that I've created as this second layer. So again, I, I don't have much paint on my brush at all, and I'm just kind of dotting it on top of that first layer that we did. I'm bringing it all the way over into this direction, and again, I'm just gonna use the little edge of my brush to kind of get this little gingerbread hand over here, so something like that. And then again, I'm just gonna kind of go through the process all around the gingerbread man. The trick again is just don't use a lot of paint. You can always add more, but it's really tough once you have that, a, a really thick layer on there, it's kind of tough to reverse it and come back to this effect that I'm doing. This almost reminds me of, I remember back in like the early 80s, or no, the early 90s, a lot of people would sponge paint their walls and they would do multiple layers of colors with a sponge. And this is kind of like a, a very similar effect to that. So once I've got my the full area, then I need to do a couple of little highlights and shadows to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. And I'm gonna do it on this step so I can almost work with the, um, the moisture of this new paint that we just put on here. So I'm gonna first tackle little highlight areas. So again, my light source is over here. So I'm taking that light color that I just made, I'm gonna add a touch of white to it to bring it like a shade or two lighter. I'm just using a tiny bit on my brush 
same process, I'm gonna add a little bit of this lighter tone on this left-hand side of the face. Again, not much paint at all, just kind of working it in here to give myself a little bit of an effect that this side of the face is a little bit illuminated by whatever the light is. And then I'm just kind of fading it off into the darker side. So something like this. And I'm gonna do that for the, I almost called it the paw. Maybe it is, maybe gingerbreads have paws. Do they have paws or hands? <laughs> paws, hands, whatever you wanna to refer to your gingerbread man's limbs as. <laughs> so my light source is over to the left, so I'm gonna make this little area here the lightest. And again, hardly any paint on my, on my brush at all but I need to reload a little bit. So I reload it and then I'm wiping it off on my paper towel because I don't want to overdo it here. I'm gonna put it in this top left of this little leg. I know that this is a leg <laughs> and a foot maybe, foot, paw, I don't know, you decide, something like that and just get it to kind of fade into the rest. I'm gonna do the same thing over on this one. I want this to kind of look like it's popping out a little bit. So I'm gonna do the brightest area over in through here. And then it's gonna kind of, like this leg is kind of flipped up a little bit. So I'm gonna do that. And if you feel like you've gone too much or too bright, just bring back some of the darker tones. You could bring back some of that second color that we put on there or even the original color and just kind of tweak it a little bit. And then I have just a little bit on this arm in through here, my gingerbread arm. And maybe some of this arm is hidden or in the shadows of the bell, but I definitely want this little um, edge to pop out. So I'm gonna make this pretty bright in through here so you can see that that's his little gingerbread hand kind of just popping out and holding on to the little bell. And then I'm gonna conversely do a touch of a shadow. So I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel and I want in through here to have a little bit of shadow. So I'm going back into the original um, gingerbread color and adding a touch of brown to it. So I'm making it just a tiny bit darker. And then I'm gonna take my brush, I'm wiping it off on the side of my palette. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of a shadow on the opposing side. So you could just go just brown if you wanted to, wherever your comfort zone is, but this is gonna make it look like it's got that little edge to the cookie. So you can certainly have fun with this. And this one I'm not fading into the um, bright area as much as I faded the, um, the, the highlights into it but you can certainly you know, determine how far you want that shadow to go in. That's gonna tell the viewer how thick the cookie is. So you can certainly in, you know, modify that as much as you want. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit over here to tell the viewer how thick that cookie is. I need a little in through there because that would be shadowed. Let's see, where else? Down in through here. And then we are going to be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this second layer on your cookie, you can wash and dry your medium brush. And I think that does it for me. Get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer to our red ribbon. I'm gonna be using my medium brush, and since I called it a red ribbon, you'll probably guess that we're gonna be using red for it. <laughs> so I'm using my medium brush. I'm having mine just kind of the hint of the ribbon, maybe the big bow parts way above. I'm just gonna have little kind of ribbons coming out the side, or the side of the top. So I've got my medium brush, and you can really have these ribbons as, as with as much movement on them as you want. They can be as wide as you want or as thin as you want. It's totally up to you. Maybe you've got yours in a more you know, wide fashion or a more scooping fashion. You just have fun with it. I'm just gonna put this first layer on. We'll do another 
layer later with a little bit of dimension to it, but this will just kind of get it to a nice primer coat. I'm going to do this over here, just get my edges the way that I want. And then I think I'm going to have one kind of coming over here like this and maybe just kind of wrapping around and give them a little bit of fun, festive, you know, like there's a, a beautiful bow on top of there kind of movement. I'm just curling my edges a little bit. My mom used to curl the edges of ribbons with with uh, scissors. She used to like pull, the sh pull it and it would make these beautiful curls. All right, so we are going to be using, mm, we're going to be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your first layer of the ribbon, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the first layer of our decorations on our gingerbread man. So I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna be using just white paint. So I'm thinking of this as frosting, right? That's how you decorate uh, gingerbread cookies. And I want my colors that I'm gonna be using later to be very, very vibrant. So I know that acrylic paint is a little bit translucent, so I'm gonna do all of my decorations in white first and then later we'll do another step where we come back and put the colored stripes and um, those tiny little details on top. So I'm going to be just kind of starting at the bottom and working my way up. I've got a couple of fun um, decorative squiggle lines at we'll call it like the ankle. <laughs> so I'm going to do two right next to each other they could touch, they could not touch. You could really do whatever kind of decorations that you want. This is really meant to, for you to have fun with it. So I'm just gonna kind of go with what, what I feel would be some fun decorations on a gingerbread cookie. So something like that. I'm gonna do the same thing on the wrist. So I'll do two lines that are just next to each other, something like that, and maybe another one right above it, but just a teeny space in between. I mean, you could put mittens on, you could put stockings. I'm not gonna do one up here because I think it would be decorated on the other side of that um, little hand in through there. I'm gonna do some buttons down the center, so maybe something like this. I'm gonna do three like that and again i'm just coloring everything in white right now because i know that it's going to provide a great base for the colors later i'm going to have a little oops i just picked up some brown by accident i'm going to have a little scarf so in the cake decorating world which i am not very familiar with but i think you can have the frosting like pop out a little bit i think it can have a little bit of texture to it so I think it can go past the cookie a little bit if you want to. I'm doing a scarf right now with a little bit of a wiggle line, something like that. And again, just doing it white right now. I'm gonna do that. So that's gonna be the scarf. So I said that because I put it out a little bit on the side. I'm gonna have a couple of the pieces coming down in through here. And again, you can decorate this whatever way you want. Maybe you want yours to have like a little bow tie or a big top hat or, you know, anything you want. This is your cute little snow or a uh, little gingerbread person. So that's going to be that. I'm going to have a really cute, like crooked smile. So um, I think I'm going to put my eyes in place first. So I'm going to have a couple of little cute eyes something like that and maybe this one's going to be something like that and my little crooked smile i'm going to have it like this and then i'm going to have this little piece coming over here we're going to i'm going to add black to it later and it's going to look super cute so something like that i'm also going to have them having some little rosy cheeks so i'm going to put some circles over on the cheeks which i'll add pink to later so one's there, one's there, 
And again, it'll make more sense when I put the pink on later. Again, just think of it like a cookie that you're decorating. You can decorate it whatever way you want to. I'm gonna have a cute little hat. So let's see, I'm gonna have my hat on kind of sideways like this. It's gonna have a little, um, almost like a Santa kind of thing coming down with a little pom-pom at the end, something like this. And again, it's a it's a cookie. Decorate it whatever way you want. <laughs> Something like that. Maybe this top, this hat is going to come up a little bit. Maybe maybe my frosting has pump has been bumped out a little bit farther than the actual cookie. So maybe something like that. And then I know that there's going to be a little top on there somewhere. So maybe I'll put the little top like that. Let's see. Is that all my decorations? Uh, I think so. Yeah. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your first layer of all of your little decorations on here, you can take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our red ribbon. I'm gonna use my medium brush. I'm using red, black, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to do another layer of red on here, and then I'm gonna do a little bit of black where I want the ribbon to kind of dip in, and then a little bit of white where I want it to pop out. So I'm just using red paint. I'm, in essence, kind of re-wetting um, the entire ribbon. So this way, when I go to put the highlight and the shadow on, they will blend in nicely with the wet red that I'm adding right now. So I've got some wet red on here right now. Before I go on to that one over there, I'll just complete this one. So I'm not washing my brush. I'm just picking up a tiny bit of black paint. I'm gonna put it in here where I want that little dip to be. I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel because I don't want to overdo the black, which it can easily take over. And then I'm just gonna kind of get that to blend in where I want the dip to be. And you can certainly make it more bright or, you know, less um, dramatic, whatever, you know, whatever visually works for you. And then you just get it to blend as much as you want it to. Oops, my ribbon just grew a little bit. And then once I've got my shadowy area on there, you can just wipe it your brush off on your paper towel, pick up a touch of white, and again, you don't need a lot. And then I'm just gonna add my little bit of a highlight part wherever I want that ribbon to kind of pop out. So if I feel like there's gonna be a, a area up here that is popping out, I just add a little bit of white to it and get it to blend in a little bit with that red, and that provides me that almost three-dimensional kind of look to it. And again, if that, if any area is too light or too dark for you, you can just kind of add that red right on top of it and it helps to blend it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. So just a little tiny bit of black paint on my brush. I think I want my shadowy area to be in through here to have it dip in right in through there. And then I'm gonna put some, I wiped my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up some red paint. Oh, I didn't wet the whole thing first like I did on the other side. You can wet the whole thing with red first. I kind of skipped that step, sorry about that. It does make it a lot easier when there's, when there's a layer of wet paint underneath it. But um, you can see it works either way. And then I'm gonna, I am gonna wet this whole front edge of it with red into here. Cause I know when I go to do the white, it definitely blends in a lot better when you've got that little wet layer underneath. So something like that. And then I am just wiping my brush off on my paper towel, picking up a touch of white to get this little highlight area. And I'm keeping mine curved so it gives you the, um, the visual information that this, that this ribbon is in motion. And then let's see, what are we gonna do for the next step? We're gonna use the same brush, the medium brush, for the next step. So once you've got your ribbon all nice and painted, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting our pine needle branches. So I'm gonna use my medium brush. I'm using black, 
my gingerbread brown color, that dark brown that we made, I will also use green, yellow, and white. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna use black and my gingerbread color on my brush at the same time to make the stems of these little pine needle branch things. And when you're doing this, think of it as almost like long pieces of grass. It's okay if they cross over one another. I'm not doing them super straight. I'm gonna have them sporadically down in that bottom right corner. I'll have a little bit down in the bottom left corner. You could really have them anywhere you feel that you kind of want to fill the space with some foliage or some color. So put them wherever you feel like you want to have them. I'm going to put maybe one or two coming up in through here. I'm going to have some crossing maybe from down here. Maybe even they're going to cross over my ribbon a little bit. Maybe they're going to be in front of that somewhat. Maybe they cross over in front of my bell a little bit. That would look super cool. Maybe I've got one or two coming down here. Different directions, different lengths. That's what's gonna make it look pretty natural. Something like this. And then once you've got enough branches, so to speak, then I just wipe my brush off on my paper towel. And now I'm gonna be using green and my brown color from my um, gingerbread to start these little pine needles coming off of the branches. So. They're kind of straight, but you can bend them a little bit. I wouldn't go crazy with bending them too much um, because it might end up looking more like um, a different kind of foliage, like a palm tree, like a palm frond kind of thing. But maybe that's that'd be fun to have in a, in a nice wintry scene, a couple of palm fronds. <laughs> um, but you can certainly have fun with making these wherever you want. I'm gonna put this green and brown on um, as kind of my first layer of the pine needles and then I'm gonna come back with a little bit lighter of a layer with green, um, yellow, and white. I don't know if I said white or not, but I'm probably gonna use just a touch of white. But I'm making them coming off of the stem predominantly, but you can certainly have some coming off of the bottom of your canvas too that would make sense if there's some below the the level of the the bottom of your canvas so really just have some fun with it um once i've got this the kind of greener layer on here i'm going to add some little bits of lighter colors with the yellow green and white but right now i'm just kind of adding it in a kind of a carefree kind of way um, you can see I go pretty fast when I'm doing this because to me the faster I go when I'm doing uh, organic type of um, detail the more natural it looks so you have fun with it and make it as as full as you want or as green as you want or as you know directional as you want again I'm using the green and a little bit of my gingerbread color you could use the the brown by itself too that would add a nice natural effect to it um i do i'm making kind of a conscious effort to not do so much that you can't see that stem because i want there to be the illusion of that stem which i seem to see a lot when i'm looking at the the different pine tree foliage stuff um but you can certainly have them again as full as you want and it, these the needles are pretty pretty straight they might have a little bit of a curve to them and again once i've got the green type area on then i'm going to start i kind of go right back and i'm going to be not washing my brush and i'm going green yellow and white on my brush at the same time and now this is going to add those bits of little bits of highlight throughout it Again, I'm not going to be doing too, too much, but I am going to allow the, the lightness to kind of show through green, yellow, and white on my brush just to give these little bits of, of highlights throughout. Make it as full as you want. Make it as, you know, dominating or as subtle as you want. I've got some crossing over others. 
it, the, the more contrast that you have in these needles themselves, which means the light to dark, um, the tonal value of it, the more you'll see the dimension to it. If it all seems to be the same color, then you're not gonna be able to see those individual little pine needles. So if you're getting to a point where everything just looks the same and you can't see the dimension to these needles or you can't, or you can't even see any of them, they just all look like one um, solid color, then that just means you need to add contrast. So you need to go lighter or darker with some of those little pine needles and that'll help to get them to pop out and look more individual um, than they may look you know as if you're using all the same color and then we're gonna switch back to our tiny brush so our small brush once you've got all of your cool pine needle accents around the painting you can put this large or the medium brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're doing all of the little tiny details on our gingerbread man so this is going to be putting the color on it's going to be putting the little shadows on of the um individual frosting it's going to be putting the little i think it's like a pendulum arm thing Sometimes I just don't know the right words. <laughs> the stick that holds the, the bell ball <laughs> to the actual bell. We gotta put that thing on there too. So I'm gonna be using a whole bunch of colors. I'm gonna be using black, brown, white, red, and green are gonna be my colors. So I'm gonna start with black. I'm going to be putting my, my stems, my ball stems in place. So I need this to make sense. So if that's the top of my bell, I need it to kind of make sense coming in through here. So I've got black on my brush and I'm just really doing one single line like that, bringing it right to my ball. I've got to do the same thing over here. So wherever I feel like the center kind of is, that's where that um, stem things gonna come and I'm only doing it maybe an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch wide you could certainly do it as narrow or as wide as you want and then I'm just gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel and put a tiny little highlight with white and yellow so just somewhere like in the middle of it just streak down a little lighter color and then I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I'm going to put a uh, little black stuff on the face, little black details. So this is going to be the pupil of the eye. So I'm going to put it in the top right hand side of my eye. I'm just using black paint. I want him to kind of be looking like he's looking up at the bell because the bells are a ringing. So I'm leaving a little sliver of white on the bottom left hand side of the, of the eye. And if you go outside the area where you want it to, it's okay. And if the left eye looks a smudge bigger than the right eye, that works too. That works also because it would be closer to us. I'm gonna also put a little bit of black in the mouth. So I'm doing just a little like a crescent, I'm going to leave some of that white on the exterior as the frosting outline. So something like this. And again, you can certainly make this into whatever shape you want or whatever expression that you would want. I'm going to give them a couple of cute tiny little eyebrows as well with black paint. So like he's curious something like that they can be at different angles something oh my god he's so cute <laughs> so i've got my black i'm going to just wipe my brush off on my paper towel i'm picking up some of my dark brown to put some shadows on where i think 
the frosting would be casting shadows onto the cookie. So again, my light source is over here to the top left. So all my shadows are gonna to be to the bottom and to the right of all of these objects. And if brown is not gonna be dark enough for you, you can certainly use brown with a little bit of black. So wherever your shadow preference is, is perfectly fine. So I'm going like this, like this. This is gonna be kind of a, a quick process. I just really um, kind of do the, the swipes really fast. So I've got this one down here so this is going to be my sh and i just think where is my light and where would it cast a shadow if this is a three-dimensional object it's going to cast the shadow on the bottom right so something like that picking up a little bit more paint oh i need a little bit on the back side of here something like that yeah that works and i'm going to go ahead over here like this it's kind of um systematic once once you get going and you understand where you want to put your shadows so again if my light is over here what and if this was a three-dimensional object where would my shadows be cast and they're going to be cast over bottom right so i'm going to go ahead and do these little buttons my little frosting buttons something like that Oh, it's going to come to life when we put the color on it. I can't wait. And then I'm going to put some underneath my scarf here. So my scarf is going to be something like this. Something like this. Oh my God, I can't wait. It's going to come a little bit in through there. Maybe underneath here. Sometimes I'll do the color first, but I wanted to get these eyes on here. So I thought that this would be a good order to do this in. So usually I build it in a different way, but this is like a surprise way. I'm excited to see it. <laughs> I'm going to do some underneath these little cheeks. It's going to be a little shadow underneath my mouth, bottom right, underneath the cheek, bottom right, underneath the hat, bottom right, and maybe a little bit over here. Oh my God, it's so cute. Then a little bit underneath the brim of the hat, the brim, the brim of the frosting hat, something like that. Yeah. All right, so now I'm gonna add some color. I'm just washing and drying my little brush and I'm gonna do a red stripe. I just picked up some red, so I guess I'm gonna do my red first. So I'm turning this white stripe red and because it's white underneath, I get my true color. So if this was not white underneath, I'd probably have to do like two coats in order to get it to be um, nice and vibrant. But because I did that white layer underneath, it's it's really nice and true. As And I won't need to do two layers, even though in essence I did two layers because I did the white underneath. but. I like doing it this way. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go ahead and put some red stripes in through here. It made it easy to plan out the decorations by just doing it all white first for me. And something like that, nice. All right, so I'm gonna have a red button in through here. I think I'm gonna leave a little white exterior to the button. So I'm gonna put just the center part is gonna be red. These two are gonna be green. I'm gonna have some red stripes on my scarf. I'm gonna have red and green stripes on my scarf. So I know that this is gonna be a little one that this section is gonna go like this. This section underneath is gonna go like this, almost like candy canes with the red and the and the green, like one of those peppermint candy canes maybe. Are the, I don't know if those are the ones that have the, um, the red and the green. I'm not, I don't know. I know that the various flavors, but anyways, I'm doing, um, on the scarf, I'm doing my, my stripes in different directions to show the sections of the scarf. So the ones going across, those are going almost vertical and the sections of the scarf that are hanging down, those are almost going horizontal. Um, I'm going to have pink for my little cheeks. So I need to make some pink with red and white. So I just mixed a little red and white to get my pink for the cheeks. And then I'm gonna do a little swirl in the, in the um, circle that I had made. So 
just a little a little cute little swirl to go around that and that's going to be my my little rosy cheek i suppose you could just color the whole thing pink but i kind of think these swirls are cute and then let's see i need some green stuff so i'm gonna i just washed and dried my brush i'm gonna put some green in my middle buttons here in the middle of my buttons something like that i'm gonna put some green here then i'm gonna put some green stripes on my on my scarf so i still want there to look like there's white stripes too so i'm gonna put them in between the reds but i'm still leaving white showing so that way We've got a tri-colored scarf going on here, something like that. And I keep reloading my brush just to make sure I've got plenty of paint on there, plenty of frosting on my, on my brush. I wonder, so I'm not a baker, but I watch the baking shows and they use those little squeeze bags. I wonder if they would actually use maybe a paintbrush to paint these colors on. I don't know. So my hat, I'm going to have a little white rim and there's going to be this um, green top to it and this little green section coming over here, something like that. And I've got a little green section to the top of my hat. Oh, of course you could do whatever color you want. Maybe you want yours red like a little Santa hat, something like that. And then I have a couple of little tiny white details left. So just washing and drying my brush. I definitely need to put some sparkle in my little eyes. So I washed and dried my brush. I have white paint on my brush and I'm gonna do two little sparkles. I'm gonna do one here and one there. And then I'm gonna do a similar in the other eye, one here and one there. And then it would all just be little touch-ups. So if you needed more, you know, a any little fluff in your in your hat you could sit here with a little bit more white paint and fluff it out if you wanted a little fluff with white paint on the pom-pom part you could certainly do that and then we have one tiny little step left to go and it's going to be with this small brush so once you have all of your little decorations on your adorable little gingerbread man you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corner. I'm gonna be signing mine with my small brush and I think I'm gonna sign mine with black paint and I think I'm gonna do it in this bottom left-hand corner. I do mine with my initials, but you could certainly do yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself an adorable little cookie creature, holiday cookie creature. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.